Hello, and today we're going to be reviewing another online classroom. background, I started tutoring online in 2012, been tutoring since 1997, wow that's more than 20 years now. You've heard about online tuition from colleagues and friends, but you still don't really know what it is, or which of the following online classrooms would be the best for the subject that you teach. So hopefully today's review will give you a better understanding of the different online classrooms that are available, and maybe which classroom is most suited towards the style of teaching that you want. So last time I reviewed the web whiteboard, which as we found had certain limitations as a board, but on the other hand was completely free. Today we're going to look at another free online classroom or online whiteboard, and its name is AWW App. So let's go and have a look at it now and see how it stacks up against my seven criteria for a great online classroom. Okay, so number one is how easy it is it to register? Well, like with the web whiteboard, in order to use the board and have access to the board, you don't actually need to register. You can just click on this green button here, start drawing. If we look at criteria number two, it says how long is the free trial and do you need to register a credit card? Now, obviously I clicked the green start drawing button. Uh, that means I have access to the classroom, I do not need uh, to register a credit card, and this is a free trial. Criteria number three, how easy is it to set up a class? Now we've already got access to the class, I can even start drawing on the board here, but in order to collaborate with a student, I will have to send them the class link. So let's quickly have a look at how we do that. As you can see, there's a very obvious collaborate button up here, we just click on that and it's quite nice it gives us a couple of options here we can share via a URL link which is this link here which we can copy we can invite via email uh, which I click on there so you um, enter the recipient's email or we can embed via an iframe so you can actually stick it into um, a website so three really nice and versatile options to share the classroom link the one I'm going to use is share via URL link so I'm going to copy that link, so it's copied. I could even also share it via social media using Facebook or Twitter. And I'm now going to send that to my student, which happens to be, in this case, my second computer. There you can see it's gone over, and the recipient will receive this little link in the Skype instant message window. And this would be the pop-up that the student would see. It invites you to enter your name. This is what will appear in the classroom. So I'm just gonna put student. And then it just says, join the board. So the setup process, like with web whiteboards, is pretty straightforward. Criteria number four, how good are the teaching tools? Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got here. Down the left-hand side, we have a select tool. Now normally you need to select something. So let's put an object there seems like we should be able to move that object around. We can duplicate it, we can delete it, we can copy it, and one final thing, oh yes, and paste it. Underneath we have an undo button, so if I do some strikes here on the page, I should be able to undo those using that button there, et voila. And also the shapes, I can undo the shapes as well. The third tool down we have a palette. Now one thing I can say about AWW app is the colors are probably the best of all the whiteboards that I will be reviewing. They're very bright and vibrant. When you're teaching a lot it does actually make a difference to have a really nice color. You even have a best spoke palette here that you can play around with to get a specific color. In terms of the pen you have a pen, a marker and a line. So the pen allows you to have varying degrees of thickness, which is quite nice. Maybe a bit too thick. The marker is just a, a thicker version of a pen, I guess. And a line, which is sort of a uniform line without the imperfections of the human hand. You can change the thickness of the line, so that's quite nice. You have an eraser, 
which unlike the previous board does allow you to change the size of the eraser so if you're trying to erase a great big marker pen like that quite easy to do with a few strokes so that's quite nice what else do you have in there scissors too sure about this I guess this just will cut the whole lot oh yes okay so it's like a an all-in-one delete shape Let me try and do that a little bit better cross and that's quite nice um, what else do we have in there oh and just I guess that would just clear the whole board clear the page yes well there's actually nothing on the page now but if I bring some of those things back and I click on clear the page I dare say the whole lot will disappear all in one go there we go shapes S standard shapes so you got a rectangle that's probably not filled in just an outline and you've got the filled in rectangle or it could be a square if you want to reshape it that way um, and then you've got an ellipse which I guess yes can be an actual ellipse or it could be a circle presumably we can change what happens if we change that to a green ah yes we'll need to make a new one there we go we have a text tool so let's see do we have an option to change the size we do in this one now remember in the web whiteboards I was a bit surprised that I couldn't change the size of it but here there is an option to change the size that's quite nice and we should be able to replace that yes yeah, so we can put it different parts of the board can we do a, a, a thing with a the color there is duplicate size oh what am I talking about of course we can there mm -hmm. and can I come back and change the color after the event I I don't know about that actually Let's, if I click on the tip oh I can yes so down here we do have an option to upload PDFs PowerPoint and images I think the only one that will work in the free trial is the image so I can upload a picture let's try that now so that's quite useful I could possibly get around not being able to upload PDFs by taking screenshots of the respective questions that I'm interested in using in the lesson and I could upload those screenshots just as uh, JPEG or PNG images so that's quite useful so how do the tools stack up? You've got an undo button, I like that. You've got um, a very nice palette full of good colors. You've got a, a pen, you've got a marker, and you've got a line tool, also very useful if you're going to teach something like mathematics. The eraser, you can vary the size of, that's great. The shape's a little bit limited um, in terms of there's no polygons or triangles, that's a bit of a problem text tool pretty good you can change the size of it you can reposition it and you can change the color of the text so that's nice and then you've got the paid options now the one thing this classroom is missing is a pointer tool now this wasn't really mentioned much in my last review but if you're going to teach on a regular basis having a pointer like an arrow is very very important when you're doing hours and hours of online tuition so it just makes the whole process of collaborating on the board so much easier. But one good thing I'll say about the tools is you can click on the selection tool. And if you need to reposition this little diagram here, you can just pick the whole thing up and move it around. And that diagram wasn't an all-in-one diagram. I added the radii and the, the lettering Q, R, and P to it. But I was able to pick that up, lock, stock, and move it to a different position in the classroom. That's a really good tool. And there are a lot of other classrooms that don't do that, so that really is a good feature. Now the fifth criteria is can you upload a PDF exam paper? In actual fact, you can. So earlier I mentioned that there were three different levels of access to this board. If you have the unregistered free account, you just clicked the button start drawing, you will not be able to upload PDF documents. However, you can upload an image. So if I just show you here now, I'm just going to upload a screenshot of an exam question. So if you're in a rush or you don't particularly want to register, you can just use this free option that you can see up in the top right. I haven't logged in, I haven't signed up, but I'm still able to upload an image. And I can place that image like so, and then start writing around that image. We can also pick that image up, move it around, 
and so it's pretty versatile. Now there is an option there to load a PDF document or a PowerPoint document, but to do that I am probably going to be invited to register. Yes, register for free. So in there I will put an email address, please don't send me tons of spam, and I'm going to set up a password. I am over 13 years of age and I accept the terms and use and privacy policy, so create an account. Okay, I'm going to be using it for uh, online tutoring. Now, I think I can just get past all of that. So up in the top right, you can now see my email address. So I'm registered. I should, if all things go well, be able to upload a PDF document. And I do have a PDF exam paper, so let's give it a go. This physics AQA paper. And I'm going to click open now. One thing to bear in mind that many classrooms take a little while to upload exam papers, so you may want to consider uploading exam papers a few minutes before the class so that you don't have some sort of downtime in the class whilst you're waiting for the paper to come up. Okay, so here's the paper. Um, interesting, never seen this before. So I can reposition the front page. It looks like it's just separated it into single pages, so I can't scroll down or anything that just zooms me in and zooms me out. Other than the interesting thing is it actually superimposes it over the previous question. A lot of other boards just open a new whiteboard, but that's that's not so bad. And I can reposition it in the center. I can zoom in if we want to get a better the resolution's not that great. How do I do a number of things actually? How do I move to the next page? I'll do that down in the left bottom left here. So I'll go to page number two. And there's nothing on that. Page number three. Right, so we actually have the ex an exam question here. It's just about legible. I don't really know how. There's no scroll down button to go down unless I'm missing something. Is there a button to move down the page? No. So that means what you've got to. So what happens if you write on that? Let's put some squiggle here. Mm -hmm. Does that come with? the PDF when you move it up? No, it doesn't. So that's a bit of a problem. If I wanted to move down through this question, I would have to drag this up, which means the workings would not move with the exam paper as I pulled it up to look at the next question. Or maybe I will do it with a hand. Ah, okay, right. So if you want to keep your workings in sync with the exam paper, don't use the select tool because that will just move the paper alone. You've got to use the little hand over here and that will keep the workings in sync with the respective question. Okay, now I understand. So that's pretty good. And we can move through the exam paper like this. It takes a little bit of time to load each page, but once you've got that, it seems to work all right. So what about if we put text there? Just put some gobbledygook. Now, does that move when I use the hand? That moves as well. So that's great. So whether you freehand or whether you write some text in, when you use the hand to move up and down the page, so it sets itself or fixes itself to the exam paper and moves in sync with it. That's pretty good. That's okay. PowerPoint document. So here's the PPT document, the PowerPoint document. Took about two minutes to upload. So you might want to bear that in mind again when you're preparing for your class. And like with the PDF document, we can scroll through it by clicking these arrows down here in the bottom left. We have 13 uh, tiles or pages in total, and I can just move through them one at a time. I can zoom in and zoom out, or if I want to move the whole page, I can use the hand tool over here on the right. Again, if I write on the screen, so if I put 47 there, I can use the hand tool, the whole thing will move up with the PowerPoint presentation. So you can annotate your presentations, and that is a really good feature. Now whilst we're here, I think we should do a little lag check. So I'm going to write on my second computer, I'm going to write the number, well I'll just write 47 again, and I'll be saying when I'm finishing it. So I'm writing the 4 now, I'm finishing that now, a little bit of lag. I'm writing the 7, finishing that now. And another number that's very good to use to check lag is the 8. Um, so I'm writing the 8 and finishing it now. 
So that's a little bit of a problem if you were carving out something like 2x plus 5 equals 7. Yes, you're sort of going to see it in fits and starts. It's not so bad, I guess, but for maths it is nice to have that real-time feeling. As I'm writing it as a tutor, I know that the student's seeing it as I write it. Now, you know, AWW might come back and say, well, there's something wrong with your internet, or maybe your computer's not uh, working to optimum level. Well, I think I can disprove that now, because if I go to uh, my existing classroom, my current full-time classroom, I will show you what that looks like with a little lag test. Okay, so we're back in my current classroom, and I want to just show you that lag test again, just so you can see, I haven't done anything with the computers, I haven't turned them off, rebooted them, the internet's still the same. We're only two minutes on from when I did the lag test on the AWW app classroom. So here we go, just as a comparison, I'm doing that same 47, and I'm writing 4, and I'm writing the 7. You can actually see me writing it on the screen. I'll just do it again, I'll do it with the 8, so I'm writing the 8 now, you can see it formulating, and I'm finishing it now. It's almost real time. 30, 30 milliseconds or something lag. One more time, so I'm going to write the 8 and I'm finishing it now. So a couple of things about it. One, it's pretty much real time. And two, you get to see the continuous flow of the pen as it moves, formulating the numbers. That's quite important if you're trying to hold the intention of your students. You want them to see it almost as if they would see it if you're sitting next to them with pen and paper. This sort of performance makes it feel like that. And that's why I like classrooms to have a limited amount of lag from one whiteboard to the next. Final question, which is what is the cost? Which possibly should have been the first question with this board because the different functionality of the board very much depends on what plan you choose. So here we are, we have the free plan, which is obviously doesn't cost anything. You get a, the basic tools, you get board sharing, and you get basic chat. Um, if you uh, register uh, for your 14-day free trial with a, an email address, you will get access to your uh, PDF document uploads and to your PowerPoint uploads. If you subscribe, which is to pay $10 a month, you will get unlimited participants on the board. In terms of day-to-day, -day, if you're doing online tuition, then the most important thing about having that um, subscription is, is that you get unlimited access to upload your PDF documents and your PowerPoint documents. In addition to that, you can also make a call to your student through the classroom. So all in all, how do I rate the AWW app online classroom? Well, I think if you're taking advantage of the free account, it's a great tool. It's probably better than web whiteboards in terms of a board that you can practice on and get used to without having to pay a subscription. So that's got that going for it and um, very easy to set up. If you want to get more serious and you want to tutor on a more regular basis with this, the paid subscription does allow you to upload the PDF documents and the PowerPoints, and it's only $10 a month, so that's actually quite good. If you want to test that out, it, they also give you a 14-day free trial. You don't have to register a credit card, so that's quite good. Does it have any downsides? Yes. Unfortunately, for me, it does have a downside. Its Achilles heel is that it does not have a point at all. When you're sharing and collaborating on the screen, especially if you're tutoring maths, you've got to have a pointer tool. It seems such a pointless detail, but it is a very important part of the teaching process. So for that reason, AWW does not get my 100% seal of approval, but it's a pretty good board, and if they added that pointer tool, I would seriously consider moving over to this as my regular online classroom. The colors are fantastic. There's a lot going for it, but it's got to have a point to it. So there we are. That's our review for today. I hope you found that interesting, the AWW board. Next time, we're going to be reviewing this board.